and welcome to the inaugural episode of What Now, a video interview series brought to you by Michigan Future, a nonpartisan think tank devoted to a more prosperous Michigan. I'm Sarah Sherpicki, the Vice President of Michigan Future and your host. What Now is inspired by the global coronavirus pandemic and the spotlight it's shining on many urgent issues in our economy and communities. In each series of What Now, we'll discuss ideas that should be applied to help us navigate the pandemic, but that should also be part of our recovery strategy. In short, there are issues that mattered before but are exacerbated now, and solutions that are relevant now and that could make a lasting difference. To Michigan Future, post-pandemic success won't mean that the world looks like it did pre-pandemic. In our first series, we're focusing on education. The coronavirus is likely to widen the opportunity gap between affluent and non-affluent and white and non-white students. But the greatest losses are likely to be worse than we know and hidden because we don't measure the growth of priority skills in young people. We first learned about the framework that we use to describe those priority skills called the six C's from a former superintendent in Godfrey Lee, a small district outside of Grand Rapids. His name is David Britton. And he learned about it by reading the book, Becoming Brilliant, What the Science Tells Us About Raising Successful Children, which was on the New York Times bestseller list in education and parenting when it was released in 2016. So we are delighted that one of the book's co-authors, Dr. Kathy Hirschpasek, is our guest today. Uh, we've gotten to know Kathy since reading Becoming Brilliant, and she's become deeply involved in the Godfrey Lee District. Uh, where they've been, where they have adopted the six C's as a framework for teaching and learning in the district, and where they've been rigorously studying the effects of making that switch. Kathy is the Stanley and Deborah Lefkowitz Faculty Fellow in the Department of Psychology at Temple University and a Senior Fellow at the Brookings Institution. Her research examines the development of early language and literacy, as well as the role of play in learning. With her long-term collaborator, Roberta Golinkoff, she's the author of many books and publications and a fellow of the Cognitive Science Society. She studies how humans actually learn and how we can design more effective learning environments in and outside of schools. We're so delighted to have her here to lay out some important foundations for our discussion on education, mid and post pandemic. Welcome, Kathy. It's your pleasure. Um, yeah. Uh, so we just were talking um, sort of before we got started in the formal interview and about sort of what we should be doing in this moment. Right. Um, and I want to get back to that in a minute, but I want to just lay a little bit of a foundation um, with the skills that you have identified and sort of lifted and are evangelizing are the, the skills that our education system really needs to be fostering in young people. So let's just yeah. go through those. Sure. Well, there are a suite of skills. We have thought of success for our children very narrowly in this country and defined it almost as if we get our kids to do well in some test when they enter into school and as they progress through school, we've done it. This is you know, what we want to accomplish for our kids. And the end game is they should be able to pass the tests along the way, and then they will be employable. But the business community has changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. And now just being good at a fill in the blank test isn't enough. Notice I said, isn't enough. Yeah. What I'm not talking about is, oh, it's no longer important to learn your reading and math skills. Of course it is. But what do we really want for our children? good test takers? Or might we change the definition to say, society thrives when we craft environments in and out of school, by the way, where children spend 80% of their waking time, mm -hmm. that support happy, healthy thinking, notice thinking is there, mm -hmm. and social children who will become collaborative, creative, competent and responsible citizens of tomorrow. Now think of that definition. The question then becomes, how do we become competitive there? Mm -hmm. And the answer that we've come up with at the Brookings Institution, where I'm a senior fellow, is that we need to think of a suite of skills or a breadth of skills that people need to have if they're going to move from cradle to career. Mm 
Right. And that breadth of skills is something we call the six C's. Mm -hmm. Now, the six C's was derived um, really from a good friend of mine who is a protege of Peter Drucker, mm -hmm. okay, who, who is credited with like the father of management. Mm -hmm. And we realized that some of the same things that they were talking about in business and in the business surveys were precisely the same things that scientists were talking about mm -hmm. when they spoke about what kids needed to know. Mm -hmm. The very first thing, the very first thing is how to form social relationships. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I talk to people in business today, everyone says, my team, did you notice that? And those teams are around the globe. Mm -hmm. And for people learning, relationships, community, social interaction, being able to navigate the social environment, it's not a soft skill. Mm -hmm. It's a hard skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the first one is collaboration. Mm -hmm. Communication. You need to be able to read and write and listen. Mm -hmm. And so we need to put that back in the equation. Mm -hmm. Built on collaboration and communication, content. Mm -hmm. You can't learn the content unless you have good communication skills and you have good collaboration skills. Mm -hmm. Critical thinking, creative innovation, and the confidence to take an intellectual risk, to be an entrepreneur, to say, if I fail, I will learn from that failure and get up on my feet and go again and mm -hmm. persist. We call that grit, mm -hmm. the six C's. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's important that you called out content. A lot of times when we've had the discussion around the state, people yeah. think that we're trying to say that content doesn't matter and mm -hmm. that it's all about these skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, right. And we see them as interdependent, I think. Um, so how do you think about like, how do they fit? It's not about deprioritizing content. Mm -hmm. so what is no, it's not about deprioritizing content at all. In fact, content is in the middle of the six C's. It's the fulcrum right. on which a lot rests, but let's look at it again with the scientist microscope for just a minute because there's evidence here. Let's take something as basic as reading. Everybody knows we have to have good reading skills. But here's what we've learned. Stan DeHaan, a professor in France, one of the scientists who, who uh, is an advisor to the Department of Education there, okay? Mm -hmm. What has he found? Brain science, okay? We all like the brain. And when we look at the brain, what we see is that reading requires that you mesh a visual system with a language system. Right. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully to that. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you get a word form area. Hmm. How does that happen? Well, it turns out that to do that, you have to have very strong relationships mm -hmm. or you won't learn enough language wow. yeah if you don't learn language and the science is well established here if you don't learn enough language you might as well be learning greek the greek alphabet because mm -hmm. you can spit out the sounds to the greek alphabet mm -hmm. but it means nothing when you convert it mm -hmm. the trick to it is the social relationship builds back and forth parent discussion with child with children adult child mm -hmm. that builds then the communication system which allows you when you learn the decoding skills mm -hmm. to decode into something so it's meaningful and you can then move on to critical thinking mm -hmm. boom yeah uh, well, I mean, it really is this like positive upward cycle, right? I mean, absolutely. Yeah, you talked about we have to learn how to um, have social relationships sort of mm -hmm. before we can do anything else. Social and re social relationships are also where I think we can do some of our best learning is absolutely. sort of within those relationships. Absolutely. And, and we've learned that, right? If there's one thing we have learned uh, in COVID, it's how unbelievably important the human to human connection is for learning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We've lost about the equivalent of a third of a school year, maybe a half of the school year, mm -hmm. if you are from an underserved community. Mm -hmm. It's not clear what the long-term implications of that are going to be. Mm -hmm. So we did our best. 
-hmm. We moved remote. We tried to make it like TV in some countries. Mm -hmm. We tried to have interactive breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's good. Mm -hmm. But what we're learning is that we needed the interactive breakout rooms. Watching wasn't enough. Um, So let's... I'm going to do one more non-COVID question, Lynn. Let's get into no, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Doing and and that is so. I think it's it's important as you've studied these skills. Yeah. Um, they aren't skills that someone can just lecture you about, right? You, right. Someone can't say, "Here's how you are collaborative." First, yeah. talk. You know, talk to somebody. Yeah. Um, they they have to be learned through experience, and so it's about designing education. Then I think becomes about designing um, environments where those skills can be fostered and can. Exactly so right. Talk a little bit about what does what does that environment, what do those learning experiences look like, even if we weren't in a pandemic? Well, one of the things that we're encouraging is thematic based learning, mm-hmm. um, which ties a lot of things together. So I want to give you a picture of kindergarten classroom it was in Westchester, Pennsylvania, after they moved to a six C's classroom. Mm-hmm. It's a playful learning classroom. And by playful learning, I just mean it embraces this kind of guide play environment where you have learning goals, Mm -hmm. where you're learning the basics, Mm -hmm. but you're learning them in a way that's going to be sticky Mm -hmm. and that's going to generalize to a new situation. Mm -hmm. So I walked in. Some of these were teachers who were absolutely certain there was no way this was going to work in their classroom. Mm -hmm. But I went in after they started and that day they happened to be studying weather. So I walked over to the one child who was holding on to what seemed to be a cardboard box, looking out of a hole in one side of the cardboard box toward a a hole in the other where he was looking at a kid standing before a map. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, oh, um, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm I'm filming the weather report. (laughs) And I said, oh, you are. And he said, yes. And he pointed to the child over here who had just written the script. I just heard the word script Uh come out of a five-year-old's mouth. Okay, I could handle that. And then the script was learned by the child who was standing in front of the map of the United States. Mm. And I said, cool, well, what will the weather be? Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, it's very interesting. There's a front coming from the West. (laughs) And as it moves across the States, we're expecting a low pressure area, which we think will generate rain in two days. All right, I just heard the word forecast. Mm -hmm. I think I heard low pressure. Mm -hmm. And she pointed to the map like the weather people do and showed me how the system was coming across the United States. So I moved to the next table. At the next table, I found children who had a little circle that had been made on various charts by the teacher and put in front of them. Their job with little droppers was to figure out how many drops of rain would fill the area of the circle of different circumferences. Mm -hmm. Uh Mm -hmm. They did that. And as a group of four, they graphed it. Then they compared their graphs to the children in the next group. That's STEM. I was watching STEM. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Okay. mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And we we know how to train teachers to do that. Yeah. The physicality that you described in those experiences is really interesting. I observe with my own kids when they're touching something. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. it's like they're, uh, it, it sticks, as you said, things are stickier. So are there characteristics that really we can help to sort of think about the learning experiences we're defining and that we want more of one, less of, less of something else? Right. So I'm thinking of the six C's as the what of learning, Mm -hmm. right? And imagine now that we can create a profile and, and I can actually show you different levels on the profile. Mm -hmm. So someone who doesn't critically think, just blurts out their opinion, weighs no evidence. Mm -hmm. But as they learn a little bit more and they learn that evidence matters, they move to a point where they weigh the evidence. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's now look at that and say we could create 
classrooms that are going to enhance each of the six C's. Mm -hmm. And within that, we can have teaching plans that are going to heighten particular profiles. Mm -hmm. So some of them may be more collaborative than they mm -hmm. are critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Some may be more critical thinking than they are communication. That's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. But you want to be conscious of the breadth. Mm -hmm. Now the how. Mm -hmm. if that's the what of learning. The how of learning, well established in psychological circles, points of consensus, mm -hmm. is that we learn by being active rather than passive. We all know that. Mm -hmm. Just hang in there and listen to something. In fact, even taking notes helps because it makes you more active, right? Mm -hmm. Active, not passive. Engaging rather than distracting. Mm -hmm. You know those dings that come in your computer? and tell you you have another email, and then you totally forgot what you were doing, yes. that's the thing that takes you away from engaging. Right. And a lot of our education does that too. Mm -hmm. It starts in a storyline or so-called educational apps. So we have active and engaged. It should be meaningful to you. If it's more meaningful, you hold on to it. If it's socially interactive with another human being, you learn it better. If it's iterative, mm -hmm. and each time you go back to it, there's a little bit something different. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more to learn and get out of it. Mm -hmm. And it should be fun, yeah. which is why I've called it playful learning. Because if we enjoy it, we're more motivated and we're more likely to stay on it. Mm -hmm. And guess who else likes it better? The teachers. Mm -hmm. So if we take that as a framework, um, mm -hmm. now let's, let's start talking about today. So we're mm -hmm. in a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids around the country are learning remotely. Many of them, for many of them, that means virtual and on the computer. It doesn't necessarily have to. And so I think we can talk about distance right. learning that isn't just on the computer all the time. Mm -hmm. So what do we know about how, how teachers can be supporting that type of learning for kids today? Well, look, the teachers are often quite constrained. And honestly, you know, they were my heroes before yeah. the pandemic. But I have to tell you, during the pandemic, they're my total heroes. Mm -hmm. Being forced to teach in ways that we never thought possible. Being forced to work with our students of all ages who are panicked. Mm -hmm. And they get it. Mm -hmm. You know, they get it. Mm -hmm. So they've parents who've been losing jobs. There's insecurity in the house. They can't be near their friends anymore. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, honestly, to keep kids engaged at all has been Herculean at this point. And our teachers are our heroes. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we're learning. Mm -hmm. And I know in my classroom, I'm saying at points, everybody unmute. We're having a discussion, mm -hmm. you know, and I know the timing's not going to be perfect, mm -hmm. but we're going to have that discussion anyway. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to those breakout rooms mm -hmm. and we're going to solve problems. So we can begin to design our lesson plans mm -hmm. and design our experiences to get at the very same content mm -hmm. we might have taught otherwise, mm -hmm. but in different ways more engaging and fun ways that stick to the principles, yeah. okay? And allow our kids to learn about their environment, not, in, not avoid it, uh -huh. and maybe solve some of those problems. Uh -huh. I would ask children today, how might you design a park yeah. so that kids could stay six feet apart and still go to the park? Uh -huh. You know? Uh -huh. I mean, they're very clever human beings, little uh -huh. children. You uh -huh. know, they can do it with Legos, let them help teach us as designers. So you are, teach college courses. I do. Study really young kids as well. Uh -huh. So what if we kind of went age by age a little bit or okay. um, developmental levels and, and sort of thought about like, what would you do if you teach uh, three-year-olds right now? Uh, <laughs> hopefully they're not really in too many virtual settings, but, the, but some of them are. So what would you be looking for for pre-K um, or pre-K and K, however you want to sort of. Well, we just about. did a study. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I'll tell you about pre-K <clears throat> is if you think they're going to hang around and watch you for a half hour, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so do what the television people learned a long time ago, short segments, yeah. Yeah. very well designed, fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, make mm -hmm. sure it's active. Mm -hmm. Now we can get kids learning math by saying, let's jump along, mm -hmm. teach them a hand clapping game. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, do the things that they're going to pick up on and take back to their parents. Mm -hmm. Have them copy, you know, a model that you're making. Send all the kids a, a bag of, you know, building blocks or Legos mm -hmm. and say, okay, watch carefully. Can you do what I'm doing in one mm -hmm. of your 15 minute segments? Believe it or not, being able to copy those blocks. How about this? When you are three, if you're better at spatial knowledge, it predicts your school entry math score. Right. Right. All right. How right. about that? Right. Okay. So pre yeah. that's preschool. Okay. So that's preschool. So what about getting into K mm -hmm. or K and one or? Um, I would say K and one much the same. Yeah. Um, a little bit longer attention spans. Maybe you can go to 20 minutes. Yep. You know, have them tell stories. Yeah. Have them bring stuff from home. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's about a recipe that you liked. Mm -hmm. and maybe it's doing it in front of kids mm -hmm. and then handing the recipe to the kids through an email mm -hmm. so they can make it at home with their parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make it live. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the observing my own kids, they did a mm -hmm. camp this summer where um, that was fun. They did a fun virtual art camp. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like the, they rushed into the content and the relationship piece. There wasn't time devoted to sort of building a relationship between right, them. Right, 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 right. And so that also <clears throat> seems, especially for the younger ones, still right. really important to design into your remote learning plan. Absolutely. And think of all the things you can do. Like in, you know, the kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, one of the things you're learning is a story arc. Mm -hmm. okay? You're learning about narrative. You're going to learn to read. Mm -hmm. But one of the things you need is to be able to follow a plot. Mm -hmm. All right. So there are many things we can do in follow a plot. Mm -hmm. Right. One of the things that we can do is tell stories. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we can even play telephone. I could start by saying, oh, I'm in a forest. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe it, Sarah. But out there, is a big giraffe. Oh, it's coming my way. What do you think I should feed it? Mm. All of a sudden, I've set you up to do okay. the next part of the story, and we can ask, what do they eat? Yeah. Oh, and you can also imagine the creative sort of outlandish ideas that five-year-olds would come Absolutely. up with. Absolutely. The problem, how would I? They get so invested in that world so quickly, mm -hmm. you know? Um, um, all right, so let's get a little older. What about later in elementary? What are you, what's your advice for teachers and parents? Well, later in elementary, you can get into kind of real problem solving, you know, like kind of be an engineer. Mm -hmm. Start thinking, or I would put that in middle school too, like mm -hmm. how does a toilet work, you know? <laughs> Go flush it. <laughs> Give me your observations. <laughs> Come back. Mm -hmm. That's doing science, okay? Mm -hmm. um, let's go see, you know, what's in the water supply in Michigan. That's been a big thing, you know? Yeah. What are the ways we can test it? What happens if you put different things like baking powder mm -hmm. in it? What happens if you add this? Mm -hmm. You can take kitchen stuff mm -hmm. and create experiments, stuff that everyone has. Mm -hmm. What can you make from a cardboard box? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And yeah. how can we imagine it? Mm -hmm. And how can you then learn about topics? I mean, pick a topic you love as a teacher, mm -hmm. whether it's weather or whether it's tennis mm -hmm. or whether it's how to hit a baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, there are really interesting physics to that yep. that we can yep. help our kids learn. Um, we invented a ball, I'm sorry, a game as part of something that we've done, which is playful learning landscapes. Mm -hmm. which um, it, you, can, you can actually see our examples at PlayfulLearningLandscapes.com. And that's Playful Learning Landscapes all together. And um, we repainted a basketball court. 
-hmm. and we put fractions on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, guess what? Older elementary kids all of a sudden learn fraction decimal conversion. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's in standardized tests just by repainting a basketball court and having the kids play. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's that, that sort of physicality again and the engagement. Exactly. You know, so, yeah, yeah. Active, engaged, meaningful, socially yeah. interactive, iterative, and fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, all right. And then how about high school kids? What are your... What's well, your with high school kids, what fun we can have, yeah. right? With high school kids, you know, in literature, they can really write stories and share them with the group. Mm -hmm. We can have breakout rooms where we co-edit mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. We can be writing poetry. Mm -hmm. What's the arc of poetry? Mm -hmm. How's that work? We can be writing lyrics to songs. Mm -hmm. We can be writing a whole show that talks about our experiences in Michigan during COVID. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the things. I would have good listening skills. Mm -hmm. We're not so good at that right now. Okay. What did you hear? Mm -hmm. Detective stories. How would you solve those detective stories? Okay. What were the cues? Did you pick it up? Okay. And there's lots of them out there that we can just get on the web, you know, detective fill in the blank yeah. and solve the problem. Yeah. For math skills, I think we can do enormously interesting things. Mm -hmm. um, even at a distance, you know, we've already talked about engineering, mm -hmm. what you can build for Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you can build with Lego blocks. Mm -hmm. How does a motor work? Mm -hmm. How can you make something run? Mm -hmm. And we can demonstrate it and we can look at the diagrams that are on the web and do STEM lessons that are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. If we know the weather's going to be bad, maybe we chart the weather, maybe we plot it. Mm -hmm. So look at all the stuff we can do geography. Oh my God, we can literally go visit places on the web. Mm -hmm. Right. By going into Google Maps, I can go into a cafe this very second in Paris. Mm -hmm. And with that, I can add language yep. and learn French. Well, part of what I hear you describing also is not um, like a lot of teacher sitting down and explaining things over a Zoom. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't that isn't what you've said. No, no, no. It's not what I said. <laughs> yeah. You know, no. I would say, you know, the period of what has been called the sage on the stage yeah. is giving way to the guide at the side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now our question is how can we be better guides mm -hmm. at their fingertips? Children can do anything right now, mm -hmm. but our job is to kind of allow them the freedom to discover and maybe flip our classroom. Mm -hmm. which has been discussed a lot in ed circles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as we do it, to always remember how children learn and what children learn mm -hmm. and use a breadth of skills approach. Yeah. Um, so you'd mentioned the sort of your um, enthusiasm about thematic learning. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about how, um, you know, how do people bring that in, especially during this remote learning period? And, and why is it important just as a baseline or why is it effective? I would say it's kind of easy to bring in during this remote period. It's as easy as it would be if you're in a classroom. I mean, what you don't get, right, is props that the teacher can bring in to the classroom. Mm -hmm. So what you do get is you get the opportunity to hold props and think about the props that would be in every household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, mm -hmm. you're bringing the kids into their own world. Mm -hmm. So now pick a theme. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. It can be communication. Mm -hmm. It can be cars. Mm -hmm. Kids love cars. It can be a pandemic. It can be a pandemic. Right? Yeah. So pick your theme. It can be knitting. You know, mm -hmm. notice knitting has math in it. Mm -hmm. You never think about it. Knitting, we can study famous quilts. Mm -hmm. Knitting, we can study Amish culture, mm -hmm. German culture. 
I mean, think about all the things we can learn in the oddest of ways that we haven't thought about before. So that's how I would do it. Yeah. So thematic learning is really about picking sort of one issue or topic and using it to explore all of the content areas. It um, is. And it yeah. yeah. Um, and so why does that work for kids? Oh or adults? Right, so let's think. Let's think about it. It's more active, right? Because you're literally taking this stuff and applying it to another area, so it's minds on. Mm -hmm. And generally, it's in a theme that you can do something in. Mm -hmm. It's engaging. It's meaningful because it connects the dots, right? And it's not disorganized. Um, if you do it with others, it's socially interactive, either with your family or with the teacher or with peers in your classroom. It's iterative in that each time you explore it, you're exploring something new. Like, now I want to know where yarn comes from. Like, what's that about? Mm -hmm. Huh. How do they make that yarn strong enough so that if I wash it, it doesn't just fall apart? Like, I don't get that. All right. <laughs> and I know. Right? It's always so, been mysterious to me. Yeah. It, yeah, it leads you to deeper and deeper stuff, right, Sarah? So yeah. it's iterative and, and it's fun. Yeah. It's yeah. fun because I'm digging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what are your, as we think about sort of today, uh, like, what are your, what do you think the big risks are that we're facing, that young people are facing? Wow. Like what what are yeah. your biggest fears right now? Uh, I hope that we don't go back to the old system that isn't working. Mm -hmm. I hope that we don't reverse course. The data are in. Mm -hmm. We're not preparing 21st century learners right now. And our job is to outsmart the robots. Uh, automatate, automatization is coming. Actually, it's here. Um, the computers are often faster than we are. The computers don't get sick, so don't have to pay sick leave. The computers can work 24 seven. So more and more what's required of our children are basic skills, yes. But also knowing how to work in teams, knowing how to navigate socially and build strong communities that don't exclude others, knowing how to communicate well, knowing how to use that content critically to do a better evaluation than a robot will do, and to put things together in new ways creatively, and to take those risks which computers will only do randomly, yeah. Yeah. but which we can do based on the science that we discover every day. Yeah. So let's not train our children to be better robots. Mm -hmm. They won't be, mm -hmm. but we can train them to be better humans mm -hmm. and we can train them to be better learners yeah. and to create a society where the robots and the computers become tools in a digital age for the humans who know how to command and control them. That's right. Um, well, so what, if you could imagine the school where that is happening, let's say we're talking about sixth graders, like, and you could walk into that school. Yeah. What's different? Like, what's that vision look like? Oh my God, it's such a different vision. When I walk into many schools today, I see desks in rows, I see quiet children, mm -hmm. and I see them driven by a philosophy that talks about or thinks about implicitly, implicitly, mm -hmm. um, empty heads of child to be filled by great sage in front of classroom. Um, I just don't believe that that's the model anymore. Um, in most of our classrooms today, we have less than 15% discussion in those classrooms. Mm -hmm. Most of it is telling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of it is, is not hearing. Most of it is not engaging. Mm -hmm. So I encourage us to allow not chaos, mm -hmm. but the kind of structured learning that makes us active, engaged, meaningful, socially interactive, iterative, and fun. Mm -hmm. 
And I know my college classrooms are more like that. And I change the theme every single year. Mm -hmm. This year we're discussing racism and stereotyping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a tough topic in these times. Mm -hmm. And my college students are engaging in the discussion. Mm -hmm. And they are reading the papers and they are active learners. And each day, we're learning something new about what the science can tell us about real application and really moving it into the society. I find that incredibly exciting. Yeah. Well, it also sounds like, so if you change the theme every year, it's more interesting for you, right? Oh, yeah. You get to yes. be exploring and that yeah. you're modeling explore exploration then and how to learn about something. Yes. And yes. so um, I just think about, you know, teachers who could feel similarly unleashed in some ways if oh they were allowed to like think about their job that way as well. Well, here's the thing. I'm a teacher too, you know, <clears throat> and I don't want to redo everything and relearn everything. But I can nest what I've been teaching for years sure. in a new context. It's like getting new clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, how cool is it to like, you know, figure out the new style for the year. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you feel refreshed when you do that. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that's what I'd love to work with teachers on. I think we can be refreshed, and I think if we are refreshed, our teaching will be better, and frankly, we'll have more joy. And in every classroom where it's been tried, mm -hmm. the number one thing I hear back is thank you mm -hmm. from the teachers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we, just, we just tried this method in the Godfrey Lee schools, yeah. and not only... For your politicians in Michigan, not only did the kids feel that their classrooms were richer, but guess what? For the first time, we saw gains in your standardized math and reading scores. Whoa, it works! <laughs> Okay. Right. Right. That's not the. It's not that the content is divorced. It's not that you have to choose critical no. skills or content. It's no. that um, they lift each other. Yeah. They, they make get it all. Learners. Yeah. They yeah. Get it all. And I guess it makes sense. Yeah. It's how yeah. human beings learn. Yeah. So well, if we, I was just gonna say, if we only teach in the way human brains learn, imagine what we could do. <laughs> Sarah, I know. Go. You know, I think if we, if you put on your parent brain, yeah, a lot of this is really intuitive to parents, is what oh, I do. Yeah. And they don't know yet, though, how to necessarily ask for this at school. Like, yeah. we think of school as the way, the school we went to, you know, 30 years right. ago. Mm -hmm. um, so last, you know, if there are parents who are watching, right. and, and, you know, maybe their kids are not in the most engaging sort of remote setting right now, they're still with a teacher who hasn't, you know, cracked it. Um, what do you, any advice for parents about, uh, either resources they should be looking at or, or ways to talk with their teacher about uh, expanding their, their mind in this direction. Oh my God. You know what I would love so much? <laughs> I would love to see the million parent March <laughs> when we can do it, when we can do yeah, it. Right. <laughs> um, maybe it's the virtual March, Yeah. but, but it's two things. One is, can we please put education back in the discussion this year mm -hmm. and every year mm -hmm. because it's about the health and well-being of our children and the future of our country mm -hmm. and the world. Mm -hmm. And secondly, can we push for change? Mm -hmm. The horse and buggy era is over. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you add to it. <laughs> add a different motor. You're in Michigan. You can add fancy motors. Right. You can even make it look better. And at the end of the day, it's still a horse and buggy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guys, it is time for the major manufacturers to make the new Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Let's get a high end, beautiful education system that teaches in the way human beings learn. Sorry. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you so much for including me. 
Join us for episode two, where we'll talk with retired superintendent David Britton about six C's learning. The school system. I just know that the way we're doing it now was great up through World War II, but after World War II, things changed and it's really not a good system anymore. It's a good yeah. model. If you want to explore some of the ideas we discussed today more deeply, you can check out these resources. Kathy's book is Becoming Brilliant, What Science Tells Us About Raising Successful Children. The Playful Learning Landscapes website is more relevant than ever during this pandemic. And finally, since our conversation, Kathy and several co-authors released A New Path to Education Reform, Playful Learning Promotes 21st Century Skills in Schools and Beyond, as part of the Brookings Institution's Big Ideas Policy Proposal Initiative. We'd love to hear from you about how to make Michigan's education system work better for all kids. Please find us on social media.